Welcome back to Fast Money. Breaking news out of the White House. President Biden just announcing a short time ago deals for another 200 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines. 100 million will come from Moderna, the other 100 million from Pfizer. And that deal brings the U.S. total to 600 million doses. More than 17 percent of Americans over the age of 18 have now been administered COVID vaccines. Now, sticking with healthcare, biotech company Amicus falling hard in the after hours following news on its treatment for a rare genetic disease. Let's get to Meg Terrell with the company's CEO. Meg. Melissa, thanks so much. John Crowley, the CEO of Amicus, joins us now. John, I believe you're on the phone as we were having some troubles with your Hi. Zoom. Thank you for being with us. That's okay. Thanks, um, you know, tell us about these. Yeah, these results uh, in Pompeii disease. You know, the trial is a little bit confusing. It did not meet statistical significance on the main goal, although you did show improvements in patients' ability to walk uh, over Lumazine from Sanofi. Um, and you also showed a statistically significant improvement in breathing. So why do you think investors are so disappointed by these results? And do you think it will impact this drug's path forward? Well, Meg, let me say, first, this is a great day for people living with Pompe disease. I think this will really lift their spirits. Most all of these patients, they've only had one drug option for nearly 15 years. And as you know, with our family's journey here, having this data is incredibly important. So what the data from this amicus study showed, Meg, is that patients on the amicus therapy compared to standard of care walked further, they breathed more easily, and they improved on other multiple measures of the disease compared to an already approved medicine. And that's pretty remarkable. You know, in drug development, particularly in rare diseases, it's hard enough to beat placebo. We went head to head with a billion dollar product and we showed on multiple measures, including walking and breathing, that these patients improved. And we were particularly excited about what we saw with patients who were switching from the standard of care. So on the breathing endpoint in particular, to be able to stabilize patient switching, we think is profoundly important. And I can tell you the investigators that we've shared this with are very, very excited about the potential for this product for patients. And we think it mm. has the potential to become the next standard of care in Pompe disease. Right. And John, we should tell the audience, if they don't know your story, you really wear two important hats uh, in this space with Pompeii disease. It was the CEO of this company, of course, but also as a dad with two kids with Pompeii. And you've got an amazing story that was made into books and movies uh, about <laughs> yeah. how you develop drugs for your kids. Uh, was Lumazyme, the comparator drug, uh, one that you worked on at Genzyme and now you're working to replace that with a better drug now? And, and will this be one that your kids would take? Yeah, thanks, Meg. You know, I used to say I have two hats, the biotech entrepreneur and the dad. I realized long ago it's really one hat. And, yeah, we're really excited about the potential here. And, yes, while the initial first-generation drug that we had a hand in has helped people, what we wanted to do is to see could we potentially provide something better for patients. That's how we founded our company, Amicus. Again, the Latin name for friend. We wanted to be the most patient-friendly company but driven by extraordinary science. And the science for this drug was homegrown here at Amicus. And again, taking it all together on the breathing endpoints in this study, the patient switching, and very importantly, 117 patients finished this road disease study, and all 117, 100% elected to stay voluntarily in the extension study only on the Amicus medicine. Nobody went back to the approved medicine. So we intend very quickly to move for regulatory approval in the United States and elsewhere. And I hope that my children and everybody living with Pompeii would have the opportunity to take this medicine. It, it really continues to be the crown jewel in the amicus portfolio. All right, John Crowley, that's all we've got time for tonight. We appreciate you being with us and we look forward to continuing to follow your story and this drug going forward. Thanks yes. again. Meg, thank you for having me. Have a good night. All right, Meg, now back to you. Meg, thank you so much. What a great story. What a fall for the stock, though, guy, down 20%. It's a big move to the downside, but let's put things in a little perspective here. If you go back to October uh, of last year, obviously, this was a $14.5 stock, and then it was off to the races, probably in anticipation of what was people were hoping was positive news. Obviously, you're not getting that specifically. But you know what? Round turn, and there's still some encouraging signs to that interview that Meg just did. So... If you're looking for an entry point, I think this 14 and a half level, which is where I think it's trading last I looked, is going to be about as good as it gets for a while, just my opinion.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.